One of the reasons why I absolutely love green laning is you can be bouncing down a very busy road like the A303 behind me. You can just turn off and within a couple of minutes you're in the countryside, you've got views, you've got wildlife, you've got the fauna and the flora and you can be in a completely different world. Literally a few hundred yards off of a very main road like this. Well join me as I go down one of these byways. Right, I don't have a, a microphone, um, so I hope the camera's going to pick this up. Uh, so this is a byway open to all traffic. It does have what is known as a voluntary restraint on it during the winter months to uh, stop damage to the lane. Uh, we've had a very, very dry period, so I've got no qualms in, in riding this or in fact driving it. So... Uh, like many of the uh, lanes around the area, there's no signage here, so you've got to know um, via Ordnance Survey map uh, where the lanes are, and I use a program called Trailwise 2, which is available in your subscription to the Green Lane Association. There are other ones available. Um, uh, there's All Terrain and they do their version called Smart Trail. Well worth the money, um, certainly if you're not sure where you can or cannot uh, ride or drive. Just here is what I was talking about. This is one of the voluntary restraint signs. Uh, this one's put up by Wiltshire Council and it says that the restraint is from the 1st of October until further notice. It does seem to be a habit of not giving an end date to them. A lot of the uh, restraints normally end on the 31st of April um, or the 1st of May. Um, but it's for everybody's benefit. Uh, we don't want these lanes torn up and ripped up. We want them preserved for the benefit of all people for many years to come. Uh, there's, a, there's enough of the uh, anti-green lane brigade out there without giving them any more ammunition. Right, although this byway looks very wide, the actual original route is this side um, although uh, it is said that a byway can be up to three meters wide or the boundary of the fields uh, so as you can see I mean people use this the whole width of it but the actual the actual defined route is this right hand side that I'm on at the moment I have seen um, this field edged and lined with poppies in the past. But you see what I was saying about, I've just come off the A303, a really, really busy road. And literally with a few hundred yards, you're in the middle of the countryside. Um, all that traffic, all that noise is gone. It's just the noise of Honda's very finest V-twin pumping away you notice I don't have any loud exhausts on here why would I why would I want to have any more noise in the countryside as I'm just bimbling along on these beautiful routes you can't have your eyes about you because um, there are a few little undulations and sometimes they can get covered with grass but I'm just sat down on the bike just taking it easy. You could ride this practically on any bike, really. Any bike's a trail bike if you're brave enough. That's um, so. Uh, you certainly don't need big knobblies and loads of suspension travel to ride a lane like this. Just need a little bit of balance, a few little uh, riding skills. Like if you can stand up on the pegs, it's always a bonus.
I'm just doing probably about 12 miles an hour along here and I wouldn't want to do anything else now there's something interesting it's uh, just showing you the credentials of this old uh, byway there is a milestone I think that's dated 1780 my eyesight's not so good um, but obviously this was a main thoroughfare at one time um, and there it does, it's Sarum to London unbelievable really that this was effectively a main road in its day wouldn't have been interested to see who was on it Obviously, it's a byway open to all traffic but motorised vehicles are at the bottom of the pecking order when it comes to the actual right of way so the walkers have the first right then horse riders then cyclists, then motorised vehicle users I was having a conversation with a friend the other day because I do a lot of green lane driving in my trusty Dacia Duster and we were talking about uh, uh, some of the um, anti-comments you get when you're driving um, on byways and UCRs from certain factions of the public um, on a bike, I don't know why, but they seem to be a little bit more friendlier. I don't know if is a bike less less threatening than a big four before. I, although mine's not a big four before, I don't know. Um, it's a very very interesting one. But when we went out, we come across the nicest amount of people that I've come across whilst green laning for a long time. Would you like us to shut the gate behind you? Have a really nice day and things like that. Normally it's a, you shouldn't be driving up here or don't you know this is a bridle way? Well, obviously if, uh, if I'm on a green lane, I've researched it and I know 99.5% um, that I've got full legal right to be there. I mean, over the years of doing it, sometimes you can make a mistake. Um, but with the what's available for you now, with regards to mapping, uh, there shouldn't really be any excuse. But at the end of the day, we're humans and a mistake can be made. So, I'm going to just stop here and take a photo. I just think this is beautiful here. That's it, turn that uh, stonking V-twin off. And like I say, the, the 303 was just over there. All that noise and all that rush. And now look, just literally a few minutes just off of that 303 and you're here. Absolutely beautiful. What I forgot to mention is uh, I've just had a new tyre put on. I did have the Metzler Tall Rants on, which I loved. Um, incredibly confidence inspiring on the tarmac. And not too bad on dry green lanes. Um, owing to the fact we couldn't get any Tall Rants, there is uh, supply problems with rubber at the moment, I've gone for the Michelin Anarchy. And, uh, so far not too bad I wouldn't say it's blowing my mind but uh, they're doing their job I haven't got one on the front because somebody uh, ordered the wrong size um, you know what I was saying about we're all humans and uh, we make mistakes I made one there so um, it'll be coming in the early part of next week so then I'll have a pair and then I can evaluate it properly so um, 
The front is a little bit on the low side, but uh, we'll be alright today. There's a uh, glider being towed up by a plane. I mean, what a lovely area to be gliding today. Right, let's uh, make our way. I think we're across the rut, don't want to uh, headbutt a tree again really. Ruts are horrible to ride in really. got in that rut really. I was thinking that uh, hopping across the right hand side but the front tyre hasn't quite got enough bite to uh, hop across the ruts. It tends to uh, skid along. You know, it's very, diff very easy then to uh, end up getting closer to the grass than what you wanted. I've had the Varadeo now for about two years and I really really enjoy it uh, especially as a road bike it is so comfortable the power is so linear it's not snappy it never catch you out you can just ride for hours on this machine and it's just so easy to ride I love the riding position. I had a sports tour before, VFR. Love the VFR. Fantastic engine, that V4. Absolutely beautiful. But I sort of grew out of it. Uh, my waistline was ever expanding. Uh, my wrists were complaining. My back was complaining. And uh, I thought it's time to have a look at the adventure bike market with a very limited budget and Varadeus um, for some reason I, I think they're a very undervalued machine they got the looks only a mother could love but they get the job done so well um, they're reliable, they're well built uh, the complaints are that they're heavy, well it's a big adventure bike, it's going to be heavy. It's got a huge fuel tank on it, but I'd sooner have the range. Um, yeah, it is heavy to pick up. Um, don't drop it is the answer really, and then it's not heavy. Uh, but I do love everything about it. It's got great brake, it has got the linked brakes, which, you know, that's a bit marmite and on gravelly lanes it's not the best but you learn to adapt and if you learn to adapt then your riding skills improve but you know for the money you really can't go wrong um, uh, this particular one was 3000 with a full honda service history uh, it had done about 30,000 or might have been just under and uh, yeah, not even run in. Beautiful motor. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep it standard as well. I mean, that engine sounds wonderful with some uh, 
anti-social cans on it but for what I'm using it for no no and here we have very typical Dorset and Wiltshire is, uh, is flinty surfaces I'll be careful with that flint sometimes it can just uh, sharp bits poking out a bit like a, an arrowhead and uh, cut through a tyre very very quickly it's a hazard of the hobby I see some people they come on like enduros and they'll be riding along here at 40 50 mile an hour not taking out any of the scenery treating it like a motocross track well my opinion is a time and a place for all that I like the next person like to get a little bit of wind in my hair but on a green lane is not the place not only are you possibly damaging the surface of the lane but you've also got to take into account the other users you could have dog walkers horse riders children on bicycles but you know why why look like a lunatic going past them it's here for everybody to uh, to enjoy and like I say if we don't start looking after these lanes and being sensible we won't be enjoying them much longer I don't think so this is where the byway crosses the main road And the byway from here on has uh, more of a surface dressing on it. But it does not reduce the beautiful views that you get from it. some of the uh, Africa Twins and GS's on the tarmac there pavement princesses is what I like to call them it's very similar to the person that has a £120,000 Range Rover and never gets the tyres money these bikes are built for a purpose and although the Varadeo was never really designed as a a uh, Ewan McGregor or a Charlie Borman machine is capable if you can ride it put some proper tyres on it go out and enjoy it put some crash bars on in case the worst thing happens my mate dropped his cross tourer last week as you've probably seen in another video had crash bars on it, no problem no damage, not even a scrape I scraped my, I scratched my crest bars the other day um, <laughs> getting it in the shed now you can see on the left this is people playing um, because this byway is too boring and this is what we're up against as passionate users of the green lanes there's people that feel the need that they've got to go and tear up you know the edges of the byways you know it, goodness sake there are quite a few pay and play sites now open you know if you've really got to go and play and you can't restrain yourself if you can't hold back then go and do some pay and plays for goodness sake get an acknowledgement of some people again so here we are look, all the way along here you know 
now and then they'd be the first to be grizzling when I say no we're gonna shut it down um, you know people can't behave and they'll be saying well what, what's anybody done about it well we've been telling you idiots for long enough but you don't take any notice because you're self entitled Right, here's one of these uh, milestones again. Sadly, you can't read too much of that one. It's just a little bit left on it, but um, again, uh, is marking that this was a very, very important road in its day before we had this surface dressing on it. Yes, I did say that a byway can be three metres, and that is, you know, in a court law, probably the right, but what I'm saying is there's no need for it. You've got a hard surface here, there's no need to damage it anymore, and you can tell it's obviously been done in the winter and in the wet. Right, gonna stop and just admire some sheep. Right, I'm back. Whilst I was talking to the sheep, uh, a lady, uh, I don't know if you can see her in the distance there, um, stopped and had a chat. She said, I used to have one of these. I said, what, have old days? She said, yeah. She said, um, I had one for five years. Went all over Europe, Norway, and then we had a, uh, a lovely chat about the love of the Varadeo and uh, her partner or husband I can't remember he had a he bought a GS and she was saying that uh, the GS's engine let go at 8,000 miles and BMW would only uh, supply the parts and wouldn't do the labour and there was quite an argument and uh, like she said the good old Honda all the time she had it never let her down and uh, certainly it's uh, why I love the Honda brand so much dependability reliability and they get the job done without any fuss anyway I say I say goodbye to the sheep for you and we'll carry on along this lovely little byway bye sheep see you on the plate soon over there on the left are not actually uh, any burial mounds, it's actually reservoirs. A lovely valley there. Gorgeous. See, I, honestly, you get a lot of, so much, people are so much nicer when you're on a bike. I want someone to prove me wrong because I'm getting lulled into a false sense of security here. getting a little bit loose under the tyres here that's where your balance and skills come in actually very good for your um, core muscles 
bit like using a a Wii Fit board if ever anyone's ever used one. And I could certainly use a bit of exercise on my midriff, there's no doubt about that. winter this is uh, full up with water very uneven Ooh, a lot of rocks at the bottom just got to be very careful when you've got a big old beast like this. Oh, oh dead pheasant. Most people in their pavement princesses won't venture beyond here. And then we've got a uh, a nice descent. And this is where you got to be careful when you got linked brakes, because of course if you put a bit of back brake on, the proportion is going to the front. So you certainly don't want to be stabbing the back brake. new pads in last week. BBC centred. There's another um, milestone there. Still can't quite read the date but um, yeah there's quite a lot of them along here. These aren't actually speed bumps along here. They're actually to help the water run off to the side. Because if you get too much water running down the road or the, the track, then it gets washed out and you end up with big ruts and that down there. So these are designed to try and divert water off to the side. As always on a GoPro, it will never show you how steep this is. I mean, it's not vastly steep, but it's certainly steeper than what it's going to come out on the film. Let the engine do most of the braking. Just tap the back brake. Bearing in mind like I say, there's going to be a bit going to the front anyway. Well, I hope um, this is an experiment. I hope you're going to be able to hear what I've had to say. I will invest in a microphone at some point, but I'm still very amateur to all this. I've got the knowledge of the lanes, but I'm not very techy. And now we are back on the Caddam. There's still a lovely lane. 
lovely bit of greenery. A few bluebells out there. Now this time of year is just absolutely beautiful. When nature has got that buzz about it, of hopefully a few months of really nice summer. And by God we deserve it. Especially for those of us that can't afford to uh, go abroad on holiday. So many lovely places in the country you can go. If anyone's wondering, the accessory holder was just off of Amazon, I think it was, about £21. It's not brilliant, do get quite a bit of vibration and movement from it. Um, and it's, uh, I've got a quad lock holding my out of contract phone. So the phone has no data card or SIM card. And, uh, I just use it, I use uh, Google Maps or Osm and the navigation uh, works really well. Thank you very much Mr Mercedes driver. And that brings us to the end of that lane. Well I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you were able to hear me. I hope I taught you a little bit about green lanes. Hope I taught you a little bit about the Varadeo. And uh, if I did, give us a thumbs up. That'd be great. Anyway, catch you on the next lane. Thank you very much for watching.